G'day folks, it's Cortez Arino, and welcome to part 3 of the castle based tutorial and we are going to finish the tutorial today guys. We're finishing the series, I'm sure you're ready to get this thing done so let's jump straight into it. Okay, now we're going to do another path and I want you to do it in the exact same style as this one. And I'll show you in a moment what mine looks like so you can copy that. But basically we're going to extend this path all the way down to this staircase right here. And just remember when you do it to knock out that bit of dirt underneath and replace it with a stone block. And we're also going to do just a little loop around our pond and come back to here. And then while you're at it, you can extend this bit of path over to the entrance of that building. So that looks pretty horrible. I'll show you what mine looks like. So like before guys, you might want to pause the video right here and don't try and copy it block for block. Just do something similar and just run around the edges with a little bit of grass and a few flowers. And what you can also do, you can see up here near the staircase, I've just thrown some bushes in around the edges of that wall. So just do it however you like. You could probably copy my bushes if you really wanted to, but it is all random. So throw in your hidden light blocks. And then what I want you to do is around this house here, which you won't have built yet, but you've just, uh, you've got the outline of those bushes. Just run around this and throw down grass and hidden lighting. And then right in the corner here, a few bushes, a few flowers. It's pretty simple, guys. It's just random, just throwing bushes around the edges and grass and just do that all around that building. So it's not a block for block tutorial when it comes to bushes and grass. If it was, we would be here forever. OK, now we're going to come over to this corner again, the same one where we counted out toward the statue and toward our pond. And what we're going to do is put two smooth stone slabs just there, just pointing toward our statue. And then we're just going to run these all along the edge of our wall here, just leaving a one block gap of grass. And we're going to keep going until we get right to the back wall over there. OK, so when you reach this point, you can see our statue up the end there. We are just going to put a slab connecting to that corner. And then we're just going to fill in all of this area in between here with tall flowers. OK, so when you're done, you should be looking like that, guys. Now, staying in this corner right up the back, what we're going to do is come inside our wall and we're going to count in three blocks. So one, two, and the third one, we're going to punch a hole in the ground. And what we're going to do is along the back wall, we're going to make a line that is nine blocks long. So we've done one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's along the back wall. Now on this wall, which heads out toward our statue, we're going to make a line that is 11 blocks long. So we've already got one. We'll go two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And then we're just going to turn this into a rectangle. So knock all of them out. And inside of these, we're going to put oak logs. And this is the one with bark all the way around. So what I'm doing is I'm just looking straight down. So the bark texture is always facing in the same direction. You can actually save wood if you want to, just by placing logs lying on their side. But try and get the texture all facing the same way. So once you've done that, find the block right in the middle and knock that out. Yep, that's the middle one. Then I'll knock out an extra one and we're going to put a sea lantern down there with a bucket of water on top and then a spruce trapdoor above that. Now grab some spruce fences in each corner on top of our oak logs. We're going to place a fence with a lantern on top. Whoops. And you've probably guessed what we're doing here. We're making a little field for crops. So grab a hoe and just hoe everything inside of our oak. OK, so we've got one field in this back corner. What we're going to do is build some more heading up toward our statue over there. So what you're going to do is leave two grass blocks. And then after that, we are going to do another field that is exactly the same. 
in every way, exactly the same size. And what you're going to do is build three more just like that, guys. So you should have four fields in, finishing just one block back from those slabs in the corner. So you can plant whatever you like, but if you want to do what I did, I planted beetroot in this one, then carrots and wheat and potatoes. Now I want you to grab a shovel and we're going to make paths all the way around. And these paths are going to be two blocks wide. So next to the outer wall here, just put your path in. Don't worry about uh, the dirt underneath those blocks. We're going to replace them at a later date. On this side, you're going to get dirt underneath these slabs. In the time lapse, I didn't worry about fixing that up. I just left it as is, but you could put extra slabs underneath if you wanted to. So just go ahead and put this two wide path all the way around all of our fields. So when you're done, you should be looking like this. And what I also did is left a few grass blocks along the edge of the wall and uh, put some grass on top of that. So you can do that as well. And then up the end near the statue, we're just going to build a path going all the way around our statue like this, connecting to the path that went around our pond. So it's like a, a figure eight path like this. So what you can do is pause the video right here and just do something similar. And then we're just going to decorate again with some bushes. So right up here, I've just put a few against the wall threw down a few flowers, and after that it's just grass and hidden lighting. It is super easy, guys. So just do it absolutely randomly. And then up the back here, all I've done is just added a few more bushes against the wall, a bit more grass, a couple of large ferns. Just remember, do whatever you like. It is pretty simple decoration. Okay, now I want you to turn your attention to our koi pond. And you may not have done the koi pond, you might have done one of my other chunk build designs here, but uh, if you've done something different, just ignore this bit. We're just going to put in some park benches. So I'm going to come over next to my lantern there. We're going to skip the first block and put in three spruce stairs with spruce signs on each side. Now I'm going to look over, to, well I'll come over to this corner and I'm looking in between the second and third window. Second and third from the corner, I'm going to put a cobblestone wall there with our lantern on top. And then I'm going to skip a block, put in three benches, and then we will put in another three of those stairs right there. And we will just put our signs on each side. And after that, we're just going to throw down a few path blocks and coarse dirt and just decorate a little bit with some flowers and grass. And we're going to continue with the path blocks. So at the top of your stairs, I want you to run a path over to the barracks. Another one going to the front door there. And one to the cook's house. And also a little path just coming around here to the garden behind the cook's house. And I will jump up above in a moment so you can get an aerial view of what I've done. So for this path here, I didn't do it narrow. I did it nice and wide because the soldiers in the barracks might be doing a bit of training out here. And over near the castle, I threw a few stone blocks into the ground. And I made sure when I put my paths in here that I put stone blocks underneath those stairs. And I also threw in a few spruce planks into the ground. So we will run up above here. Once again, don't try and do exactly what I've done. Just do something vaguely similar. And the next step, guys, is just to decorate with some grass and flowers and put in your hidden lighting all around the building. Now, up the top here on this top level near the castle, the lawns would be a lot more manicured than they're going to be down the bottom. So only put the occasional little tuft of grass but if you're spawn proofing, make sure to throw down lots of hidden lighting. And over here, I've also done a few little bushes just around the back of the cook's house. There's a few more up here. So once you've done the top level, we can come down to the bottom level. And this is super easy. We're going to spam a lot more grass. And just around the sides here, I'm just throwing down random bushes. 
and my hidden lighting. So pretty easy. Just run around with your grass and, and your lights and fill all that in. And staying with the same materials, I want you to come over to the koi pond and we're just going to decorate around here as well. So I've got some more bushes along the wall. Around here, we'll fill all that in with grass and flowers. I've got more bushes here. Next to the pond, I've built a little bit of a, a rock just out of some stone slabs and covered that in bushes and more bushes in the corner. So you can pause the video and copy something vaguely similar to that, but once, like I said earlier, it's all random, so just do whatever you like. And now we're going to start working on all the trees in our castle base. And I've kindly provided you with a world download for this one. Otherwise, this uh, this uh, big one tutorial for each of these trees, we would be here forever. So instead, if you're able to get the world download, you will find that in the video description. And I've numbered them. But uh, otherwise, if you're not able to get the world download, then you'll be able to pause the video and sort of copy what I've done there. There's the trunk. And this is what it sort of looks like once you put the leaves on. So this is tree number one. And we're going to be doing tree number one many times over. I just did the same tree over and over again. So you can see there are three right here. Just go ahead and build those in about the same spot. Then over here we have another two more next to the castle. And then down the bottom there's another one. And we've got a few more around this side. Like don't try and get them exactly where I put them. Just do them in about the same spot. The other two I think is just one there. And one in the corner right here near the Lord's house. And that is it for tree number one. And the next one is tree number two, which is this one right here. So here's the trunk. It's made of dark oak wood and we've just got some oak fences running around just for tiny little branches. And this is what it looks like when we've filled it all in with the leaves. And moving on from that one, we will go to tree number three, and that is our cherry blossom tree. And this one is right up against the edge of, uh, of the cook's house. So this is the trunk. This is completely made out of dark oak wood and dark oak fences. And the blocks we're using here are pink terracotta, pink wool, pink glazed terracotta and pink glass blocks and a few pink glass panes. And tree number four is this great big one over next to our pond. And the trunk for this one guys is built from spruce wood this time. And once you throw all the leaves on this is how you should be looking. And tree number five is just over near our front gate over near the koi pond as well. So just build it right here and this one is super simple. So the trunk is just a seven block tall pillar of birch wood. And then for the leaves I've used oak leaves rather than birch leaves. And if we continue on over the top of our little bridge here is tree number six. It's another simple one. We're just doing it just behind our little fountain. So here is the oak wood trunk for that one. And I've used dark oak leaves for this, but you could use oak. They look pretty similar. And now we're going to go down to the back left-hand corner of our castle build. And here is tree number seven. So we've just slotted it in here. It's, uh, it's going to be rammed up against the wall and pretty close to these anvils. So tree number seven has a super simple trunk to it that's all made of spruce wood. And we're just going to pile on the leaves for this one. And they are oak leaves. And right next to that is tree number eight. And we're just putting this one right in the corner. And once again, this one has a very, very simple trunk made of oak wood. And then we've just piled on the leaves nice and high. And these are all oak leaves. And if we turn the corner and come over here just behind the entrance to our castle, 
And behind our cook's house, you will find trees number 9 and 10. So number 9 is this great big pine tree, and number 10 is the smaller one right next to it. And these are both made from spruce wood and spruce leaves. So this one for the big pine tree, that trunk is 18 blocks tall. And this is how I filled in the leaves. So we've got nice gaps between layers of leaves so you can still see the trunk of the tree. And for the smaller one, it's just a pillar 11 blocks tall and something similar for the spruce leaves. And it looks like our castle grounds are now 100% complete and it's time for us to turn our attention to the moat. But if you're not doing a moat, then uh, you are already finished. So what we're going to do is just inside this outer wall of the moat, we are going to dig a trench that is five blocks deep and just underneath our blue lanterns here, we are also going to dig a trench that is five blocks deep. And make sure you turn the corners and go all the way around. So once you've done that guys, I want you to remove all of the earth that is in between your two trenches. So that should, the entire area should be dug out five blocks deep. And I'm sure that took you a rather long time. So now what we're going to do... We've got a huge trench, you can see we are going to dig out just below our castle wall here, just two blocks. So we've already come down five, we're just going sideways at two blocks. And on this side, we're going to dig out underneath our outer wall, just two blocks deep again. You can leave the blocks in the corners there. And you will notice as you're digging that out, you're going to knock out the blocks underneath our doors. So just go ahead and put some stone and cobblestone in there so the, the doors can stay with our... Okay, now what we're going to do is underneath each of these stone bricks around the outer wall, we're going to put two stone bricks just below them. And what you can do is every now and then just mix in a cracked stone bricks. And you will also be doing exactly the same thing everywhere where we've got a lantern you will be putting down two stone bricks like that. And once again, every now and then mixing in a cracked stone brick. So remember all on the inside wall, it, below all our lanterns, we're putting in our bricks there. And on the outside wall, we're doing it underneath those stone bricks. Now, what you need to remember is where the front gate is, you see this stone brick here? We are not putting two underneath that. What we're going to do is skip a block and then put a stone brick there and the same on this side and get rid of everything in the middle. This is where our bridge is going to go. So you'll be putting your stone bricks under those two. And once you've done that all the way around, we are going to fill in the gaps in between and our block pallet is cobblestone andesite and gravel just those three blocks so on the outside wall go ahead and mix all of them in just randomly and do the exact same thing on the inside wall okay staying with our same block palette of these three blocks what we're going to do is along the edge here we're going to build up two blocks like that and then put a stair on top. And the two stairs we're using are cobblestone and andesite. So you'll be just doing a random mixture of those. So do that all around the outside wall and do exactly the same on the inside wall. Two blocks and then a stair on top. So when you're done guys, you should be looking something like this with it running all the way around. So the next step is super easy. We are going to take out two more blocks from the grass below our feet. So starting just on the edge of our wall, just go ahead and dig out two more blocks. Just like that. And I'm on a creative world, so my floor here is all dirt, but yours will be mostly stone. So the next step is pretty much what we did above. We're going to use the exact same block palette. We're just going to do one block this time. 
with a stair on top and that'll be exactly the same for the inside wall. So just go ahead and fill those in just like that and this will look a lot more like yours now. I've put a stone floor in and I didn't bother going to too much detail with the stone floor where there was naturally occurring gravel I pretty much left it there and I just mixed in a few little andesite blocks around the edges but uh, basically I got rid of all the dirt in the ground here and any diorite or granite I just made it stone andesite and naturally occurring gravel. Alright guys now we're going to do our bridge so look over toward our front door here and underneath the door on the left we're going to skip a block and then place a stripped dark oak log and underneath the door on the right skip a block then place a dark oak log and just run these two all the way along until they connect to the other side. Once you've done that grab some spruce slabs and starting against the wall we're just going to place them every second block all the way along there and come around to this side and place in your slabs and then we're going to grab our stripped dark oak logs again and we're just going to run cross beams on top of our slabs so do this on each side. So once you've got those in just grab some spruce planks and fill in everything in between. And the final step is just to grab some spruce fences and run these along on each side. It is a crazy simple bridge, but it looks really nice. I think it is very effective. And the next step, guys, is to fill in this entire area with water. And you'll notice I'm my water here is only three blocks deep. So I wouldn't go any higher than that. So yeah, just fill in three levels of water. It's easiest to fill them in one level at a time. So have fun with that. And that's it, guys. That is your castle base 100% complete. You've done really, really well getting this far. It has been a huge job. So stay tuned to my channel, guys. I've got lots more crazy ideas coming. So until next time, I'm Cortezarino, and I will see you later.